In the previous 3-minute example, link below, we built this part in SolidWorks using the concepts from the Helix Curve and the 3D Sweeps 10-minute lectures, also linked below. This short video is the direct follow-up to making that part more realistic, specifically making the transition to the squared ends smoother by explaining how to use the variable pitch parameter under the Helix Spiral command. The part drawings we were given in the previous example showed a double cone, conical spring, 60mm tall, 20mm larger coil diameter, and a taper angle of 10 degrees. The note regarding the square end coil was most likely there due to the fact that if the end coil was complete, instead of 3 fourths, it would physically intersect with the previous coil. For these reasons, an ideal more realistic version of this part would be a conical spring where each cone is still 30 millimeters tall, still with a taper angle of 10 degrees, and four full coils on each side. The larger coil diameter of 20 millimeters and the 1.5 millimeter wire diameter would still be the same. So what we're gonna create is a helix curve on the top plane using a 20 millimeter diameter circle to define it. The difference here is that we are going to use the variable pitch option. And for this example specifically, we'll use set values for height and revolution. That way we can restrict the 30 millimeter height. And just like with the previous example, make our start angle 0 degrees so that the transition between the top and bottom halves happens at the front. Now we know a couple of things here. If the wire diameter is 1.5 millimeters, we want to make the first three revolutions go up to just below 28.5 millimeters, so that with the last coil, 1.5 millimeters tall, we reach 30 millimeters. We input that data into the table. The last value we need to input on that line is the diameter at that point. With a simple trick function, we can calculate that at that height of 28.5 millimeters and an angle of 10 degrees, the new diameter is 9.95 millimeters. Notice that we also have control of that first pitch value here. And this will change everything about the behavior of the rest of the spring. So 28.5 divided by 3 revolutions, we get a 9.5 millimeter pitch. What we actually want here is for the pitch to start and begin with the same value, at 0 and 28.5. So you can play with the values close to 9.5 so that the great out value of the pitch on the second line is the same, but 9.5 is gonna be close enough. Now, we cannot just jump to 4 revs and 30 millimeters because what SolidWorks will do is try to make the transition as smooth as possible. And it will actually tell us that the revolution number cannot be higher than a certain value. So since the maximum value is 3.31 revolutions for 30 millimeters, which means we won't be able to get to 4 revolutions and 30 with one more table line value, we split the last coil into 3 with heights of 29, 29.5, and 30. Using the same calculation for the diameters at those height values, we type 29, tried 3.33, one third of the way from 3 to 4 revolutions, just as 29 is between 28.5 and 30, but since we are limited by a max value, we take whatever that max value is. Then 29.5, 3.66, same reasoning, and here it does work, no error, and 9.6. And finally, 30 millimeters, 4 revolutions, and 9.42. And we're basically done. We sweep the helix with a 1.5 millimeter wire, and we copy it while rotating it 180 degrees with respect to the origin, just like we explained in the previous video. Now you see a much better, more realistic spring than what we built in the previous example. The links to other spring examples as well as all the main 10-minute lectures of the SolidWorks course and other engineering courses are found in the description below, so make sure to check them out. Thanks for watching.